Interesting, that you, uh, we don't in our world, and haven't since the days of the Greeks who did, combined philosophy and art with sport. But quite clearly, the Oriental attitude is that the three are facets of the same thing. I mean, you know, sports is a, is, is, is a tool that teaches, you know, and it teaches you bad things. It can also teach you good things. It's how you perceive those things. Be true to the game because the game will be true to you. If you try to shortcut the game, then the game's going to shortcut you. If you put forth effort, you know, good things will be bestowed upon you. You know, that's truly about the game. And in some ways, that's about life, too. You know, because I'll be jumping all over the place. I jump from one subject <laughs> to a whole or to a, to a total different subject because my mind just be moving so fast, mm -hmm. so fast. So I jump, you know, I'm not crazy. No, it's like in the boxing ring. Your mind's just moving. My mind just be moving so fast. Mm -hmm. And I'll be all over the place. Mentally. All the cash going, ain't that funny? All of these plastic crafted to make classics. My mind just be moving so fast. My uncle Roger sometimes. He go into a, he go into a, his mind frame is just crazy. Mm -hmm. He get mad, he get upset, he use foul language. So we have to have patience. Mm -hmm. We have to have patience with my uncle. We have to take time out, take a deep breath and say, just wait, just like boxing, have patience. Things. And I've had this experience where I can't run anymore, but I walk. And I, my time walks. If I'm thinking a lot, that sucker is slow. There's something about thoughts that slows down. If I'm not thinking and just allowing the thoughts to come and go, there's speed. Or there's uh, sort of like the, people talk about the speed of trust. When you have a trust in a relationship, you can do things really quickly. It's the same with us. When we trust the universe or we trust that we have confidence in what we're doing, and faith in, in the process, then there's this ease, this just being with things as they are momentarily, moment to moment, and it becomes a flow. In the house that I grew up in, um, you know, uh, there was always a little bit of pessimism from one of my parents. Uh, one, one of my parents, you know, uh, as I learned, as I continued to grow up, um, they were very, they were hurt. You know, I think, I think both of my parents are hurt. We're all hurt in some ways. Um, but the hurt that one of my parents, you know, probably went through in the course of their life caused them to be pe pessimistic. Um, and also that pessimism caused them to be very guarded, right? And I think that that mentality, you know, infiltrated my world, you know, um, a bit. It could have infiltrated my siblings' worlds as well, but, you know, I can only speak to you from my, my own experience. And, you know, I became, I become a guarded person in, in some ways. And, uh, you know, inadvertently and directly, you know, you know, uh, my parent always taught me to, you know, at any cost, protect yourself. You know, always protect yourself at all times. I always remember that message being stated to me, um, either directly or indirectly by their own behavior. You know, at all costs, make sure that you go out and get yours and do whatever you got to do to protect yourself. That's, that's a lesson that I remember learning in my household. And when I started boxing, you know, it's interesting how unconsciously, you know, you, you, know, you pick and choose what lessons that you want because one of the first lessons that my boxing coach had taught me was always to keep my hands up, you know, at all times. And the lesson was, that you got to protect yourself at all times. And, you know, it became clear to me that, you know, that's how I live my life, you know, at least certain periods of my life. You know, I'm very, 
I'm very guarded, you know, I'm very watchful, very vigilant, you know, very observant, but I always stay, you know, uh, guarded with certain people, certain things, certain situations. Um, in certain situations, sometimes it's, a, it's, a, it's many situations, it's many people. If you see me boxing in the ring, whether I'm doing pad work, whether I'm doing bag work, whether I'm actually fighting in the ring, and even if, you know, when, in my younger days when I would fight, um, you know, actual fights, you know, in the streets, you know, I'm always, I always keep my hands up, always, always, always ready for somebody to try to hurt me, so I got to make sure that I protect myself. So, to say that, to say that what, what I learned at home actually trickled into my fighting style, you know, you know, it was it, my, my, my worldview, my being, my state, um, uh, my state of being actually was symbolic of, uh, oh, I should say my boxing style, my fighting style was actually symbolic of the way I live my life. Professional sports isn't much different than the real world. The players who love it the most, and the players who work the hardest, the players who put in the biggest commitment, they're the ones who ultimately are successful as athletes. And then when they go into the real world, the business world, those are the athletes that become successful in a whole different venture. So there's a very you know, similar uh, sort of mindset. One more, Jared. Come on, Kelly Holmes. It's gone. Great Britain, what a performance. You won it, Kelly, you've won it. Yes, you've won. I had a host of injuries from ruptured calves, torn Achilles, stress fractures, glandular fever, you name it, in probably the uh, most critical time of my career and um, when you're going through those problems you go through a real roller coaster ride of emotion so I also got depression um, as well and it made me realize that you know you can as a person find a real inner strength if you really want something in life and I desperately wanted to be Olympic champion and so I broke it down really into really small stages because when you get down to the, the lowest it's like a mountain you know, you're trying to climb this mountain in, instead of like little hills and people look at the top of the mountain and they just think, I can never get out of it, I can never do anything about it. And a year later, after the worst time of my life, I won my two gold medals. Has she got it up in the home straight? Hayeska tries to move out, but Kelly looking round to see where the danger is. There doesn't appear to be too much. Now she's got to push on. Now she's got to kick for home. Kelly Holmes going for two gold medals. It's going to be Hannah Storek's second goal. That's really the key about this whole thing. It's not, it's bigger than just a game of basketball. It's really about finding out who you are as a person and what you can do and, uh, and, and knowing that you can go beyond what you believe your physical limitations or mental limitations are. Martial art has a very, very deep meaning as far as my life is concerned because uh, as an actor, as a martial artist, as a human being, all these I have learned from martial arts. You also say that the critical ingredient in winning a ring is love. Would you like to explain? Uh, you know, I know teams that get along well together, they party well together, they have great times together, but they're not about, you know, the sharing and the, the real deep care that goes into what you have to do as a team. You know, you have to protect each other, you have to cover each other's butt when they're, someone's getting beat off and so you have to know the, the patterns that people best fit when they come off for a shot, how to deliver the ball the right way so they can get a good shot. All these type of things go into it that mean that you have to move outside yourself and think about others. Talking about is that when an athlete gets in the zone? Uh, the zone is, 
that's how you can help yourself get in a zone. I, I can talk about the anatomy of a zone if you want me to. But, but what it is, is, but what happens when you're in a zone, so if you talk to people about being in a zone, they'll say things like, uh, there's no self-consciousness or I disappear. Time gets altered. The basket, if you're playing basketball, is really big. And I know what's going to happen. There's a level of premonition of knowing things and there's an effortlessness about things. And what happens when we get in the zone is when we're in the moment and the mindfulness, we have, we have a string of mindfulness or a, str uh, uh, a flow of being present for each thing where we're just allowing things to happen. It's like we're flowing like being like water. We're just flowing with the way things are. And in that flow, there's a knowing because the right brain or whatever just knows because we train the body. It's like this. We train the body and then we get the mind out of the way and let the body do what it does. And so, but you have to be in a high state of arousal, which means your, your challenges and your skills have to be high. And you're in a high state of arousal. So that's what we call excitation, some people. But for the elite athlete or the person that gets in the zone for whatever reason, they're observing that crisis as an opportunity. And there's this relaxed poise there. And then because of that, they're just allowing things and there's a supreme confidence and things keep happening. When you get in that zone, it's just a supreme confidence that you know it's going in. It's not a matter of if or this, that, it's going in. Things just slow down. You know, everything slows down. You're, you're, you just have supreme confidence. But when that happens, you know, you really do not try to focus on what's going on because out, it'll, you, know, you can lose it in a second. Everything becomes one noise. You know, it's not, you don't hear this or that. Everything's just one noise. And you're not paying attention to one or the other. You just, you just stay right there. You have to really try to stay in the present, not, you know, not let anything break that rhythm. And again, it's on, you just kind of stay there. You, know, you don't become oblivious to everything that's going on. You know, you don't, you don't think about your surroundings or you know, what's going on with the crowd or the team. Think about your surroundings or you know, what's going on with the crowd or the team. You know, you're kind of you're kind of locked in, and uh, so I don't know. You, know, you have to really try to stay in the present, not you know, not let anything break that rhythm. You know, I never, ever dreamed to play basketball as a professional athlete um, or as a professional basketball player. But um, I, my dad always had me playing, you know, um, the middle school. Uh, you know, I played in high school, I played in college. Um, and I was a good athlete, you know. was never really a superstar, but I could hold my own, you know, at all, at all levels I played at. But I remember being at basketball camp going into one of my high school years, I went to this camp called Born to Run, and I was just having like a phenomenal game. And I remember this one time whenever, like the game almost was just, it was just me. I mean, I was playing with, you know, my team, I guess another team, but I just got into this heightened state. And I remember some kid, I mean, matter of fact, it was my friend Claude. Uh, it was an out of bounds pass. He threw me a bounce pass. And for some reason, you know, I just knew that somebody was behind me. I had no consciousness of somebody being behind me, but something, I just knew it. And as soon as he threw it to me, I just tapped it. I just tapped it like that, and it went to one of my teammates. I don't know how I knew he was there, but it went to him. He caught it. He laid it up, and he got fouled for the and one because he made the shot. And I'm like, how did I know he was there? And I didn't. I didn't, but I was in such a heightened state that it's even hard for me to explain. I mean, that was a time, I probably was like 15 years old at that point, you know, but it, it's, that still sticks out in my mind because I just don't, I just don't know how that situation even happened, but I was just in a heightened state, you know, and that's how I actually, um, I don't think I consciously transferred that experience into my public speaking, 
but you know people always ask me you know how do you give such these, these these amazing presentations you know how do you give such great discussions you know what's your formula and really it's i don't know if i have a formula you know my formula is almost no formula i mean i practice you know um and i and i, and I study what i want to talk about and i do practice i practice you know, how I want to give my talks, but I don't necessarily practice my talks. I just go up there and really my presentations are just like a bunch of pictures. Like I know what I want to say, I know what I want to talk about. I connect myself, I, I offer myself to something outside of myself. And in that offering, something else takes hold of me. And again, I connect to this heightened experience and I, I, I engage in this heightened experience. And it's just, it causes just a phenomenal atmosphere so I don't need to have a bunch of note cards I don't need to have a bunch of you know words up on my slides it's just it becomes part of me and I become part of it I connect with the divine mind if you will you know it's amazing momentarily moment to moment and it becomes a flow that makes sense and so that's what it is so when we train this is what we want to do if you see martial artists doing their their cotters or their or their little movements, what they are doing is they're not training the body, they're actually training the mind. So that the body does what it does, but the mind has to get out of the way. So if it's in that greed state, if it's in that hate state, or if it's in a confusion state, then there's no way to be in a zone because you're thinking about, well, what am I doing? And most people in that situation are more focused on how they're doing than on what they're doing. And once we start asking, well, how am I doing? Or I made that shot, I got to make this shot. That's all noise. And for the being in zone, there has to be space to create or, or uh, uh, emptiness. Or let's like, say room is that space between stimulus and response. Make sense? I said empty your mind. Be formless, shapeless, like water. Now you put water into a cup. It becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put it in a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Now water can flow or it can crash. Be water, my friend.